ship for light speed. No, 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 light speed is too slow. We're gonna have to go right to ludicrous speed. <gasps> Prepare ship for ludicrous speed. The galaxy is a vast place with great distances between our star systems. In this video, we're going to explore FTL travel in Stellaris and find out what all of the options are for transport and logistics. So without any further ado, let's dive in and find out how we can move things around the galaxy. The first and most obvious way you'll have to get around the galaxy, the first and only method of transportation at the start of the game, is with a hyperdrive and flying along hyperlanes. Now, hyperlanes can be seen quite easily on the map. They are the lines that connect any two systems together. In order to fly along a hyperlane, your ship must be equipped with a hyperdrive, but don't worry, at the start of the game, you do have hyperdrives on all of your ships, so that shouldn't be a problem. When we want to move a fleet somewhere else in the galaxy to another system, for instance, first, that fleet will need to move to the edge of the system it's in, and there you'll actually be at a hyperlane jump point. From there, it will charge up its hyperdrive, and once ready, it will jump system to system. Now this jump isn't instantaneous, it will actually take your ships a couple of days to move along this hyperlane from one system to the next. Along with in-system sublight travel, this is the basic method for moving your ships around in the game. During the mid-game, you're almost certainly going to unlock the technology to use hyper relays. In order to build hyper relays and start constructing a hyper relay network, you'll need to unlock the hyper relay technology. To get this technology, there are a few prerequisites. Visits. You must have some form of crystal technology or access to crystals, and you'll also need to have completed hyperlane breach points. This is the hyperdrive tier 2 technology. And once you've got the hyper relay technology, you'll just need to take a construction ship, and then for 25 influence, 500 alloys, and 100 rare crystals, and one year of your time, you can construct a hyper relay at the edge of a system. Now, one hyper relay by itself is completely useless. You need to have adjacent hyper relays for them to be effective. Once you have adjacent hyper relays, if you now decide to move to another system via these adjacent hyper relays, your ships will automatically path a route through the hyper relay. If we take this science ship here at Encato and we try to move over here to Dithlon, you'll first of all notice that the hyperlanes between our capital here and Dithlon all have thicker lines. That's because a hyper relay network gets a thicker hyperlane line than just a regular hyperlane. And if we right click and attempt to move here, our ship will first move to the edge of the system where the hyper relay is. But from that point, they will no longer actually move between the systems. They will simply jump from one hyper relay to another hyper relay in an adjacent system. And that means that you no longer have to spend time moving across any systems. You can instead simply move to the edge of one system with a hyper relay and jump across again and again and again until you get to your destination. This will reduce your travel time by an order of magnitude, making hyper relay networks very effective. And if you're enjoying this video, please transport that like button. We also get a few edicts that will affect our hyper relay network. Your hyper relay network is the hyper relay paths you can trace from your capital to all of your other planets. In this case, Enato is the capital system, and Bashpat and Evexus here both have hyper relay connections and are thus part of my hyper relay network if I were to activate one of these edicts. The three edicts are network dominance, that will increase your exotic gas upkeep of your hyper relays for every hyper relay by plus 0.1 and give you plus three stability on every world in the network. That is equivalent to getting about 2% extra output from resources. Network movement increases your volatile moats upkeep from hyper relays by plus 0.1 per hyper relay and gives you an automatic resettlement chance of plus 50% and a resettlement cost reduction of minus 25%. Finally, networked amenities, which I believe is the most powerful networked edict, gives you an increase in rare crystal upkeep for your hyper relays, but reduces pop amenities on all worlds, their usage, by 10%, which is very, very good indeed. That should be easily equivalent to the increase of plus three stability here, if not more, from increased happiness across your worlds. Now there's also a more natural way of bypassing having to use these hyperlanes, and that is an Einstein-Rosen bridge or a wormhole. These are naturally occurring phenomena that are linked in pairs. 
Every wormhole in the game will have another wormhole somewhere else on another side of the galaxy that it is linked to. You can see this on the galactic map by clicking on one of the natural wormhole icons and it will drag you across to where the other natural wormhole is. In order to utilize these wormholes for travel, you'll need to research the wormhole stabilization technology. Just like Hyper Relays, you'll have to research hyperlane breach points as well, and have also encountered a natural wormhole somewhere in the galaxy. If you control a system with a natural wormhole, the chance of this technology appearing is four times greater. So if you want to fly through wormholes, make sure to have one inside of your territory. If you're enjoying this video and the other videos on this channel, you can help to support this channel by becoming a member on Patreon, becoming a member of this channel on YouTube, giving a super thanks down in the comment section below, or purchasing something from the Humble Bundle store. Links to Humble Bundle and Patreon are down in the description below. Until the 15th of June, you can get your hands on another fantastic Paradox title, City Skylines, for only one euro on Humble Bundle. If you want to get the full bundle, including all nine expansions and 21 add-ons, you can grab that for less than 20 euros. You can also customize how much money you want to give to charity, support this channel with, give to the Humble Bundle store and the producer Paradox Interactive by customizing your purchase in the Adjust Donations box. There is a type of artificial wormhole that we can also create during the course of the game as well. If you meet the Shroud Touch Coven, you can, if you get to a level of 40 opinion, ask them about travel via the Shroud. Now they will, if you pay them some energy credits, allow you to build a Shroud Beacon. A Shroud Beacon can be built at one of your star bases and provides passage from your system to the system that they have their Shroud Tunnel in, which in this case is the Bapogia system. Once you've accepted the terms from the Coven, you just need to go to your starbase, the starbase you'd like to have your beacon in, and spend 500 alloys and 25 crystals. And then three years later, you're going to find that a wormhole of sorts has appeared in the system with the Shroud Beacon. This functions exactly like a regular wormhole and simply takes you to the Shroud Tunnel. Be careful though, as this one is a little bit like an L gate in that any Empire can build a Shroud Beacon that will take them all to this system and therefore that can take them to your systems as well. Jump drives function like an upgrade to a regular hyperdrive. They are a very high level technology. You are going to get massively reduced jump charge time with these and also the ability, if every ship in a fleet is equipped with one, to make a jump. You can only make one jump every 200 days and they do have something of a limited range. Side jump drives have a larger range than regular jump drives, and after you've made a jump, your ship's weapon damage and sublight speed will be reduced by 50%. So don't jump straight into combat unless you are very certain you're going to win. Another form of transportation is the quantum catapult. This is a mega structure and you will of course need to take the mega engineering technology in order to build this, along with the quantum catapult technology in the physics tree. Once you've built one of these, simply move a ship onto the quantum catapult, go to the galaxy view, and then the ship will have the catapult fleet option. This will allow you to move the ship anywhere inside this massive radius. There are two tiers to the quantum catapult. Level one is a smaller radius, and level two is this large radius you'll see. The further away you attempt to send this ship or this fleet, the larger the error uh, you're going to find. Close to the quantum catapult, you'll actually get very low errors, and that can make it quite an effective and useful tool for actually flying around. But at a great distance, if you set a fleet off here, it could land in any one of these systems, and that can be a problem. A nice benefit of the quantum catapult is that it will reduce the time spent missing in action while we own hyper relays. That means if your fleets arrive at the wrong location, they will arrive home faster if you've got a quantum catapult. Gateways are pretty much the final transportation method you're going to get your hands on in this game. They are something of a mix between wormholes and hyper relays in the way that you need to construct them and then their general mechanics. In order to travel through gateways, you'll first need to research the gateway activation technology. This technology can only come up if you've actually discovered a gateway somewhere in the galaxy, either built or ruined, and there will be a four times greater chance of it coming up if you already control a system with a gateway. Gateway activation requires you to have researched the hyperspace slipstreams technology, which will also be unlocking the tier 3 hyperdrive for you. As you unlock better and better hyperdrives, these hyperdrives will take less time to initiate a jump and therefore increase the speed you're moving around the galaxy 
and dramatically increase the speed if you're moving via only hyper relays. Just having gateway activation isn't good enough to be able to build your own gateways. You will want to build more of these in order to build something of a network across the galaxy. To build this network, you'll need the gateway construction technology. This requires you have both the gateway activation and the mega engineering technology. And because it's locked behind mega engineering, this will usually be quite late into the game. Definitely quite a bit of time after you've unlocked and started building your hyper relays. To actually build a gateway, you should first select a construction ship and then you'll have to build a gateway site. That's going to cost you 75 influence and two and a half thousand alloys. Just like a hyper relay, this needs to be built at the edge of a system. Once the gateway site is finished, you can now upgrade it to a fully fledged gateway. That's going to cost an additional 6,000 energy and two and a half thousand alloys. So each gateway is going to take quite a bit of time, 5,000 alloys, 6,000 energy and 75 influence. But how do these gateways work? Well, in essence, you can fly into a friendly gateway and travel from that to any other gateway in the galaxy that is in your network. In order to be in your network, a gateway has to either be in neutral territory, allied territory, or your own territory. You cannot travel to a gateway in enemy territory unless you have fully occupied that system and thus gain control of that gateway. This makes gateways the fastest method of transportation in the game, as I can move from one system in the galaxy to any other system with a gateway, and it will be instantaneous. L gates are very similar to gateways with a few key differences. You can never build L gates only activate the system or the network as it exists in the galaxy. L gates can be found around black holes in your galaxy and when you open up the L gates a small cluster of stars will appear off to the side of the main galactic body. This cluster is only reachable via the terminal egress system, as this system contains the central node in the L-gate network. You see, every L-gate is connected to this L-gate in terminal egress. Thus, if you want to fly anywhere from one L-gate, you first have to come to terminal egress, and then you can fly from there to any other L-gate. But what do you think about transport and faster than light travel in Stellaris? Let me know down in the comments below. As an empire with an extensive hyper relay network, you can generally respond to threats at your borders with high, high speed. That means that you possibly don't need to maintain as large a fleet in order to defend your entire empire because you can react to one border threat, move back to the central systems to repair, and then go and attack another border threat before your enemies have a chance to group up together. But how do we deal with another empire who is using this kind of technique? Here I'm going to declare war on the United Adnoran Commonwealth. As you can see from these thick lines, they have hyper relay networks stretching out all the way across their empire. I'm going to start off here by making use of a quantum catapult to throw a single large fleet into this empire, a fleet that should be able to handle one station or one small fleet by itself. Luckily, I've arrived inside the enemy space and the main purpose of my being here is actually just to disrupt the enemy's defenses. Now, I don't want to do anything except take out their hyper relay network because that's going to make it much, much more difficult for them to react. To achieve this, I'm now going to split up this fleet into smaller fleets of single ships. I'm then going to take these single ships and as I'm stuck in a system with an FTL inhibitor, I'm going to make use of a jump drive. Now, if you don't have a jump drive, you will have to take out the main station first before moving around to other systems. But I'm basically going to jump to every undefended system. Once I jump in, I'm going to fly in and attack the star base. And as soon as I occupy the star base, the hyper relay in that system will technically belong to me. And that means the enemy will no longer be able to use this as a node in their network, massively slowing them down. I can then use the return order and make this ship go missing in action via emergency FTL jump, and it will return home to my home systems relatively soon. By deploying all of my fleets like this at once, within a few days, I can knock out their transportation network, then allowing me, a person with a functional hyperlane network, to strike at the edges of their space at whatever speed I desire. 
as you can see, the enemy are now having to move through these systems and attack the gateways in order to recapture the hyper relays and get things going. This is going to annoy them and harass them, and it's actually really, really useful for you as a player to do something like this. If you're using quantum catapults, you can also use a jump drive to recombine your scattered fleets after you've thrown them through a quantum catapult. Because you see, every fleet you throw through a quantum catapult will end up probably in a different system. And that can mean you're going to find it very hard to combine your forces if there are things like FTL inhibitors and fortress worlds between your fleets. Being able to move your fleets to react to threats is a key and important part of this game, but you can also build massive static defenses to repel the enemy as well. If you'd like to know how to turn a system into an absolute fortress, what you need to know about is orbital rings. If you'd like to know more about those, click the video on screen now.